And even with our families, if you think about it, with our children or with our husbands or wherever, the, the places we work, when people know that we're walking through a difficult season or that just life is hard, but we are determined to think, you know what, God, you are with me here and I'm going to praise you anyway. I think that impacts. It's like the fragrance spreads. You know, yeah, people begin to notice and they're changed. You know, the, the mm -hmm. two years, three years now, beginning of the pandemic has been really hard. I mean, a lot of people have really struggled. They've really struggled with anxiety or depression. Um, and I, I have too. That's something I've struggled with. But I discovered mm -hmm. that when I begin my day by thanking God, by praising Him, it just shifts something inside me. In fact, one of the mm -hmm. lessons I learned, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago from Ruth Bell Graham, from Mr. Graham's wife, sometimes when she would be off on, he would be off on crusades, I would go and stay with her at the house. And she was such a spiritual mentor to me. And she told me this lesson. She said, one of her children was really struggling, had wandered away from the Lord. And she said, every night she used to get down by her bed and literally just sob and weep and begin to ask God, please do something. But then let me read this to you from Philippians chapter four. It says this, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. And she said she suddenly realized that that part of thanking, of praising God, she had completely missed out of the equation. So she said from that night onwards, every night she'd get down beside her bed and she would praise God for what he was about to do in the life of her child. And she said, even though it was probably another few months before there was a shift there, the huge shift was in me. And, and I think that's wow. one of the great gifts of praise. We give us a gift to him, but it's a gift back to us too, because it changes us. You know, studies would even tell you how singing out loud releases endorphins and oxytocin in your body. So which, are, you know, and, and those are hormones that create positive emotion. Um, those are hormones that really just reduce any level of stress or anxiety. And so I think in the beauty of God, he created our bodies in a manner that it responds to praise. Because singing out loud does not mean, if you, you could sing out loud a, a song that reminds you of loneliness and <laughs> sadness, that is not going to change your mood, you know, but there is a response that even the brain worships when we praise God. Um, but what I love so much too, and that, you know, Victoria, you mentioned that are they days that we wake up and you, you don't, you don't feel like praising, you don't feel like worshiping. And that is absolutely true. But that reminds us that we are not, we haven't come into the awareness of the one who has actually given us the ability to recognize this day, that we are, that we're so focused on ourselves and not focused on the one who has given us life. And that is what I love about worship and what I love about praise, because just like that scripture, we enter into his courts with praise in order to recognize the courts of who we are in, right? Because when you worship God, when you it, it causes you to set your gaze on him, it causes you to put him in his rightful place and re see that, oh my gosh, I'm in the presence of the King of Kings. I need to get up. I need to worship. I need to thank you. I need to seek you, you know, and it just reminds you of whose presence you're in. And that is one of the beautiful things I love about worship. And we see that even when the disciples ask Jesus, teach us how we should pray. And one of the first things he tells them in that model prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That was worship. Before you even start declaring or petitioning or anything, recognize the presence of who you are in. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's something too um, that about remembering who we are. I, I saw this kid um, in a coffee shop the other day and his t-shirt said, normal ain't coming back, but Jesus is. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh, but, there's, but there was such a truth to that. It's like, because I'm thinking of people watching right now, and some of you are in the best days of your life, and yeah. some of you are in the most challenging days of your life. Some of okay. you just got great news, and some of you just got the most devastating news you've ever had. So where is the ground level before the cross? It's the fact that because of Jesus, we win. You know, he is coming back one day. We're going to be with him forever. And sometimes that's the place I start with. I start with what I know to be sure. Because sometimes I haven't during the pandemic, but I often twice, three times a year, I'll be in some of the worst areas of Africa where we've set up feeding programs, or I'll be in the streets in Cambodia where we rescue girls from sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And I'm always aware of, okay, what can we share here that's true? Mm -hmm. 
whether you live in Beverly Hills or you live in Angola, where they've had the worst drought in 40 years, what is true and what is true is that Jesus has promised you will never be alone. I will never leave you. I'm going to prepare a place for you and I am coming back. And I think when we remember those basic truths of our faith, every single one of us has a reason to shout out loud. Yeah, beautiful. I love that so much. Um, it reminded me, there was a story that I heard about a pastor who had lost his son. And as a result, he had a lot of anger and animosity towards God. You know, I'm serving your people. I'm doing all of this. How could, how could you let me lose my son? Um, and every time he would come before God with anger, that he would hear the, the Lord tell him, worship me and sing praises before me. And he never wanted to do that. And he was just like, why, why should I? You know, you took my son and he dealt with so much anger. And one particular day, he just gave in. He was like, you know what? I'm just going to worship. And that was the first time that he broke down in tears. And he, mm-hmm. it, what started off, not he didn't feel like it was authentic to him. But as he started to worship, all of a sudden he felt the love of Jesus that mm-hmm. I can't have normalcy back, right? I'm not, I don't have my son with me, but it was recognizing, but Jesus, you would always be with me. You would never leave me. And even though I don't understand your plans, I know that they're always for me. There's some things that are beyond my understanding. There's some things that what I think is best for me, you might say, you know what? not in this manner. And from that place, he began to pastor over his church again. And I think that's so powerful when we look at the foundation of why we come before God. It's not because of anything that he gives us, because again, we don't own anything he gives us. We only steward over what he gives us. And from that place, we can we can praise, we can worship because some people might be listening to this and maybe you just went through a loss. Uh, maybe something tragic just happened in your life. And it's like, I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel like praising. I want normalcy, but normal is not coming back. I love that so much, yeah. but Jesus is. <laughs> and, and Jesus, and not only is he coming back, there's a promise he has given us. Never would he leave us. Never will he forsake us. He would see us through That's the it. low times of life. And he will see us through. He will be with us in the high moments of life. And that right there to know that you have an advocate who is always by your side. I mean, it is truly worthy of worship. I I love that. And in fact, that's absolutely right. Because in Philippians, the first chapter where Paul is in chains, he says, um, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, know that I'm in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. So you're absolutely right. When even And even with our families, if you think about it, with our children or with our husbands or wherever, the, the places we work, when people know that we're walking through a difficult season or that just life is hard, But we are determined to think, you know what, God, you are with me here and I'm going to praise you anyway. I think that impacts. It's like the fragrance spreads. You know, people begin to notice and they're changed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community. 